Okay, so welcome. Um, you have 15 minutes. You're free to use the time however you like. Um, obviously, you can split the time between giving your submission and then us asking you questions, or of course you're free to just talk at us, or we can just ask you questions straight away. So your time starts now. Uh, welcome. There seems to be a little misunderstanding because the committee sent us an email and told us that we will have 25 minutes, and we prepared ourselves for 25 minutes. So. My been, statement uh, will be about been, 15 minutes and well, then... You're free to use your 15 minutes, but I think um, we've been quite clear with you. It's consistent with every other member that's submitted. So you have 15 minutes. Please feel free, Mr. Doctor. Well, it's use unfair that because we were emailed that we have 25 minutes and I was told that you changed that today. And I just um, think it's that's not fair. Not, that's actually not right. And you very recently just sent us an email to say you wanted more time. So you've been quite aware of that. So you have 15 minutes. Please start and um, feel free to use the time. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak about the proposed amendment to the GCSB bill. I had the misfortune of experiencing what happens when surveillance powers are abused, an unlawful destruction of property, reputation, and freedom. It is an injustice that I continue to fight every day. These abuses should never happen again, and that's why I'm here today to speak out against the proposed spy law. I was illegally spied on by the GCSB, and when these violations of law were exposed, all New Zealanders, including myself, received a formal apology from the Prime Minister John Key. But should that apology be considered a real apology, when the Prime Minister is now proposing new legislation to legalize the illegality. The new GCSB bill demands an expansion of spying powers. This is poorly timed considering the scandalous leaks concerning U.S. mass surveillance of the world's population, including U.S. allies. Unnecessary and unwarranted, unwarranted spying on citizens not only poses a threat to our basic liberties, it also damages diplomatic and trade relations, which does not enhance our security. Earlier this week, the European Union issued a strong statement demanding full clarification from the United States after it was discovered that the NSA had bugged European Union offices in Brussels, while Member State Germany has summoned the US Ambassador to warn Washington over what they describe as a breach of trust. The French President has indicated that a trade pact with the US, which was scheduled to be negotiated on July 8, may be threatened by this development. This is not a model that New Zealand should be attempting to imitate. Unchecked spying powers not only erode the right to privacy and freedom of expression, it also has a negative impact on innovation, economic growth, and business. Executives of Vodafone and Telecom have appeared before the committee to clearly state that they did not see any need to expand the GCSB's powers. They said that a new interception law would result in a chilling effect on investment and development of new networks in New Zealand. I speak to you as someone the US Department of Justice has labeled a pirate. In light of the massive and unlawful theft of personal information by the US, these charges have become deeply ironic. The proposed GCSB bill is actually supporting this piracy of private information. Most importantly, the Prime Minister has failed to explain why exactly these greater powers and greater privacy intrusions are needed. We need to tune our surveillance laws to protect Kiwi values in light of the risks New Zealand faces. We should avoid blindly following the U.S. into the dark ages of spying abuse. The Prime Minister wants to make us believe 
that the GCSB misunderstood the law. But in reality, the old GCSB Act is an example of language and legislation where there is no room for doubt or misunderstanding. The problem with the new proposed bill is the unclear language, especially concerning the power granted to determine the issuing of warrants. The Kittredge report found that the GCSB had spied on 88 New Zealanders. Despite the clear prohibition of intercepting communications from citizens and permanent residents. Clearly, there is an accountability problem here. Why would citizens choose to relax the limits on the government's spying powers in response to the GCSB breaking the law? In the 1980s, New Zealand stood up to the United States by banning nuclear warships from its harbors. In 1985, Prime Minister David Longy took the world stage and told the Americans and every other nation that nuclear weapons are morally indefensible. It was this brave stand that has given New Zealand true independence and the moral high ground. But at a great cost, the US government retaliated by virtually freezing New Zealand-US economic relations. The cost from lost opportunity to do business and trade deals with the US would amount to billions of dollars over the last three decades. I asked New Zealanders to consider whether that heroic stand should not be repeated today. When a great power such as the United States is committing immoral and illegal practices ranging from Guantanamo to torture to drone strikes, let alone mass surveillance against the entire world population. Including its allies. There has never been a greater need for New Zealanders to once again step forward and declare that their values shall not be abandoned or suspended under pressure from the United States. Because in the reality, the GCSB is a subsidiary of the NSA and the US government calls the shots. Given the pattern of abuses of power by the GCSB, what New Zealand should establish is a fully independent oversight committee to ensure the law is observed. A regular review of GCSB compliance by a transparent third party is crucial. We need to know more before we allow any new spy legislation to pass. I suspect the real scope of illegal spying by the GCSB is much greater than we know today. Rebecca Kittredge wasn't allowed to look behind every closed door. Every member of parliament should demand a real investigation a real independent inquiry into illegal spying because New Zealanders need to know the truth. Please do not vote for, propo for the proposed GCSB bill until that has been done. Privacy needs heroes just like the anti-nuclear movement needed heroes. We must constantly be reminded of why we put limits on the reach of our governments. We must constantly cherish the liberties that make our society free. The respect for privacy is a moral absolute. We cannot value human rights if we hand our private information to a spy cloud with five eyes. Six minutes. Um, you're obviously free yeah. to carry on reading if you'd like. Yeah, but I'll if, carry would you, on. Thank you don't you. want us to ask you any questions? The new GCSB bill is drafted to pave the way forward for the agency to perform spying on behalf of other agencies, the majority of whom have no legal obligation to respect your rights. The NSA can spy on New Zealanders, New Zealanders can spy on Americans, the British on the Canadians, and so forth. And then they give each other access to retrieve data about their own citizens. They are hacking the law. Just like any partner in the Five Eyes Spy Club, the GCSB gets access to the Five Eyes Spy Cloud. 
This spy cloud contains every email, phone call, chat message, SMS message, almost all communication of every New Zealander. The GCSP can simply input the selected data of a person, like they did in my case, as if they do a Google search and everything about that person becomes visible going back many years into the past. All they need to get to get to all that information is your phone number, your email address, or your IP address. A former NSA official interviewed by Wired in 2012, long before the Snowden leaks, described the US-based Utah data center, a data center which has the size of 17 football fields, and said this is where the Five Eyes information is stored as a turnkey totalitarian state. Can you imagine the power that comes with a system like that? Theoretically, you can know everything about your opponents instantly. How much money someone has in the New York bank account, who leaked secret government reports to the media, or who called one of their donors to thank them for a political donation that he later declared anonymous. This is the kind of power that makes you want to hire a trusted high school friend to run the whole thing. <laughs> so it's you and he and one trusted analyst who prepares everything you need to know and nobody will ever know. The temptation to abuse of such powers is very real. My experience alone shows that the abuse of spying powers is not limited to national security considerations, but may also be manipulated by special interests. GCSB was involved on the raid on my home to support an alleged breach of copyrights for Hollywood. This has nothing to do with terrorism or national security. It is quite wrong of anyone to suggest that this bill simply clarifies existing law. You don't clarify by giving the Prime Minister new power to issue warrants to spy on New Zealanders just because he believes something might be in the public interest. You don't clarify by allowing the GCSB to spy on New Zealanders and others just because some in the GCSB think that the target might damage New the New Zealand economy. And you certainly don't clarify by allowing the GCSB to obtain any information at once about New Zealanders from the NSA or other Five Eyes partners without a warrant and in return share with them any information that GCSB has about anyone, New Zealanders included. The proposed GCSB bill is not a clarification. It's a huge overreach by an agency that has shown it cannot operate legally within the far more limited powers it has right now. And I'm almost done. The proposed GCSB bill is an insult to the strong concerns recently expressed by the United Nations about governments using vague concepts of national security to justify massive reductions in privacy and other human rights. The proposed GCSB bill is a betrayal of New Zealand's Bill of Rights, as the New Zealand Law Society has quite rightly pointed out. It is not a clarification. This new GCSB bill is totally unjustified in a free and democratic society. It will be in our best interest, in the interest of every New Zealander who still believes in privacy, freedom of expression, and government transparency to make our voices heard loud and clear. The proposed GCSB bill is morally indefensible. Thank you. Let me just run through a few things. Firstly, just to clarify something for you so you understand the law. Um, it's, in relation to your own situation, yes, you're quite right, it was illegal, um, but it would also be illegal under the current law as well, so nothing actually changes. Uh, it would be illegal activity that's not being resolved by the law. Secondly, in terms of Rebecca Kitteridge, actually you're quite wrong. She had full access to all information. What the bill does do, though, is um, I'm sure you're aware, or maybe we can test if you're aware, is provide agency support to the SIS. So that's a sort of outsourcing, right? Would you, you accept that? Well, uh, first of all, the Kittredge uh, report and Rebecca Kittredge were not allowed to look into the Kim.com matter, right? So they not all at, doors were open. They could look at all, all information. But let, let me just ask you this question. When you had mega upload, 
That was a file storage, right? And file sharing system that people could put data on, right? Yeah. Okay. And and um, could um, could an individual or a company that used Mega Upload could they have potentially put that um, data on their own system and shared it in their own way, but they outsourced it to you guys because it was uh, efficient uh, doing things, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can so can I just ask on this their question? Own servers, but uh, you know, it's much more costly. Yeah, yeah. You have exactly. to buy the server. No, exactly. You have to pay for the bandwidth. So in the private sector, if I as an individual find it a lot cheaper and more efficient to outsource that part of my business to a specialist like Mega Upload, wouldn't SIS want to outsource their specialisation of um, gathering information through GCSB where they're under a legal warranted basis to do that? Isn't it logical that companies all the time actually outsource their... Well, their I mean, uh, the GCSB spy cloud is nothing else as, uh, you know, a big mega upload. But the but problem that I have with that spy cloud is that it shares access with other countries, and if the Americans spy on New Zealanders and put that in the spy cloud, sure, sure. all the GCSB has to do is look for a New Zealander by putting their number in, and they know everything about that person, Listen, but and that can't be right. But my point, Mr. Dotcom, was a pretty simple one, isn't it? But actually in the private sector, people go to outsource their activities, as they did with Mega Upload, and actually, that's because you have specialization. If GCSB has specialization under legal warrant and legal authority, it must make absolute sense for the government to do exactly the same thing and allow under those activities that to be outsourced. It's exactly the same well, as mega upload. Well, cost saving are great, but uh, you know, on mega upload you would share a file. Uh, on the GCSB spy cloud you share private information about citizens that you don't have any right to access. That is a big difference. Well, let's, okay, let's, take, let's take a couple of questions. We've got to yeah. catch a bit more time. Can I just acknowledge the fact that if it if what had happened to you hadn't happened, we wouldn't be here today. And so in, in some ways we're grateful for this coming out. I don't believe the process has been in, in any way adequate, but at least the fact that what happened to you has happened, we are here looking at GCSB. Yeah. Could I ask you, uh, in your opinion, do you feel there has been or was uh, adequate oversight of the GCSB by the Minister and the Director in, in terms of the activities that happened well, I think the answer to that is really simple. If there was proper oversight, these things wouldn't have happened. You know, so the answer is no. Do you, do you feel that the, or do you know or believe that the, the, the Prime Minister was aware of what you were doing prior to what he has actually stated in, the, in public? Sorry, if he was aware, aware of, of your activities and your... In, in, in your and before the raid took place? Oh, um, he knew about me before the raid. I know about that. I didn't know. You know, I know. I know you don't know. <laughs> I know you don't know, actually, but that's fine. Why are you turning red, Prime Minister? I'm not. <laughs> Why are you sweating? No, it's hot. Oh, OK, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, go and check what you filed. OK.